Hello everybody and welcome to this video where I want to show you how to use things like timers in points-free composable architecture. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I recommend you to go and watch points-free videos. They are great and, and they do a great job of explaining this architecture. I'm pretty sure in the following weeks they will explain more things about this topic, so it's likely that this video gets outdated soon with a better and more refined system to do this thing. But I wanted to do it anyway because I've been using this technique and it works quite well. I haven't come up with this myself either, but it was Brandon in himself that posted with these changes on Twitter. So I just want to show you what I was doing before and how these changes make everything much nicer. The code you're seeing right now is for an application that I'm building that it's not really relevant for this, suffices to say that it needs a timer running to update the screen. It's basically a timer app, so it obviously needs a timer. Right now, you're seeing an old commit of this, so code has, code has changed since then, but it will serve me to show you how my thinking was before Branded posted the solution for the timer. The first thing that you obviously think about is like, well, you could create a timer and treat it as an effect. And that works. The issue is that you can't, mm, that you can't stop this timer ever again because you don't have any way to hold into this timer and keep it in memory to cancel it late. Back then, my great idea was, okay, let's just use dispatch to create a timer ourselves. So my idea was, well, when a start was tapped, I just start the, the dispatch system, which is basically uh, a dispatch after 0.1 seconds. And when that's done, I just called the tick event, which is gonna do a bunch of calculations and stuff, but at the end of the day, it's gonna call again the same thing. So it's like a recursive call, but the whole point is that after the start is going, I just have a dispatch after every 0.1 seconds and it keeps the, the loop going. It's obviously far than ideal, so I was pretty happy when, when Brandon published a good solution for how to use the timer or any cancelable effect in this architecture. In this commit, you can see that when the user starts a timer, I just call the effect to start a timer and when the user stops it, I just cancel the timer. So there is a way to cancel it. And if you take a look at the timer tick, at the end of the day, I do something to play effects and stuff like that, but there is no, nothing that keeps the timer running, like the timer runs on itself. The best thing is that to accomplish this, you only need this set of changes. And that speaks about how well done this architecture is, like when you can add cancelable things, like it's not a simple concept, you're actually adding and improving the features of this architecture by a lot, and you can do it in such a simple way, it means that it's properly well done. So you can see the, the diff on the gist that he published, but basically the only thing you need to do is you add a cancelable effect when obviously when the, when the failure type is never, so like it, it needs to be something that it can never fail. Otherwise you get into more complex stuff that it's not worth for this scenario. And then you just need a way to cancel it. And so you have another effect that it's gonna cancel the previous one. And then the trick of this whole story is how do you keep these effects around and how you basically how you keep them in memory to access them later in, in later time. And the trick is a pretty cool trick that you can do in Swift. Some uh, the same trick that I used on my ex on my plugin for Publish. It's the same trick here. It's like when you don't have any object to attach some piece of memory that you want to keep around. In Swift, you can always use a private global variable. Yes, it's not super nice. Some people will say that it's not desirable, but as far as I know, there is no real drawback on it if it's done purposely. For example, if you keep it private, you have total control. Your library has total control of it. And if you keep it well regulated, there is no harm that that come up from it. Basically, you are hiding this complexity of how to keep things in memory from the, from the end user, which is always nice. In this case, we have this private bar cancelables allows you to keep these cancelable effects in memory and then at a later time with an ID, which is it's anything that is hashable basically, you can cancel them. And you can see how it basically simplified a lot of the logic here. I don't have to have this dispatch thing running or, or even worse, like my initial idea was like, well, I just have the timer running all the time. Like you start the app and the timer is already there, so I don't have to worry about it. So this now is much better. There is a timer and you can cancel a timer. Pretty nice. And that's it. I just wanted to show you this. Short and simple, but it's really useful to know these things if you're starting to dig into this compassable architecture. 
the architecture is really well done and really nice. I've used uh, similar architecture, similar Redux style or Elm architectures in the past. And there is always been something that it didn't convince me 100%. In this case, the point free guys have answered every concern that I had. So I'm using it already and it's pretty nice. And so if you are using it and you find yourself needing a way to cancel the effects, here you have a solution. Keep an eye on their videos because I'm pretty sure that they will explain this much better than I've been able to do in this short video. So that's it, nothing more. Thank you for watching and thank you to the Point Free guys for sharing all this knowledge with us. See you next time.